Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday where Angel and I take time and answer as many of the questions as we can that you sent in to us. We try to group together thinking, well, these probably be real important. So we've selected a few today. So we're just going to jump in. Angel, let's go for it. Well, first, I'm going to give you a little marriage, a little <laughs> marriage tip key. All right. Husbands are the best people to share your secrets with. They'll never tell anyone because they weren't listening anyway. <laughs> That's uh, the truth. Mm-hmm. Okay. My daughter just turned 19, a sophomore in college, and she just told us she's pregnant. I don't know how to navigate this. We never imagined her doing this after being raised in a Christian home. What do we do next? Great question. Yes, it is. First of all, be very careful how you respond to her. Yes. Because it could affect the relationship for years to come. I, I have somebody in my life that had the same thing happen, and the mother really shamed her. And to this day... It's a bad, I mean, it's a filter on her, and she's she's in her sixties now, and it's it's very sad, and it it really really marked her. Words last forever, people. Words last forever. Be careful, you the words you let out of your mouth. This is a thing. So she's pregnant. So now you just have to to deal with the 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 fallout, for lack of a better word. A friend of mine, her daughter. Well, her future daughter-in-law um, was her daughter's best friend, and she got pregnant. And the mother was so empathetic until she found out who was the father, that it was her son, that they had been at a party together, and it was a one-night stand and everything. And I remember I, I was right there when she found out, and I said to her, now be real careful how you handle this. Because it could make or break your relationship in the future. And I said, now, regardless of what's happened, that child is going to be a gift and a blessing. Yep. And so that's what you need to focus on. That child will change your family, and he or she will be the biggest gift that you've probably ever been given. And she said, I'm so glad that you said that to me. And now that little girl is probably 12 years old and is absolutely the gift and eventually they did marry, and they're very happily married. Yep. Uh, so um, it's not the unpardonable sin. Oh. And a lot of times I think people react because they're embarrassed. Yes. All humans And do I that. see a lot of parents uh, overreact because of their embarrassment. And that's not a way to discipline or correct someone. So from now, now she's already feeling bad about it, I'm sure. And feeling like, oh, she knows. You don't have to try to be the Holy Ghost for her. She she already knows, especially if you've raised her in a Christian home. But here's the truth. Uh, She's doing what everybody else did. She just got caught. Yes. Let's just be honest about it. Yes. So, um, So first of all. I think you need to look at it from the positive aspect of what's going to happen. Yes, of course, I understand that wasn't probably what you planned for your daughter and everything else. Well, we all have things that our adult kids do that wasn't what we planned uh, or what we thought was going to happen. And uh, and that's okay because they're adults now. They have to walk it out. She's going to have to grow up a little bit faster. The best thing you can do is to love her and support her through it. One time I had a guy that worked for me, and he had had a child as a as a uh, when he was in high school with a, with a girl, and uh, he had gone on, gone to Bible college, gotten married, was doing very well, and he said to me, "What when I my daughter comes to visit me? What should I tell people?" I said, "Well, you better hold your head up and your shoulders back and tell them this is my daughter. And if somebody has something to say to you about that, they better say it to me, because I said there's no shame in that. Don't ever feel ashamed about that. And you could tell that it took some of the condemnation he had felt away. So 
please, this is something that the church has way overreacted on. And it's like, uh, I remember even when I was young uh, in the ministry, uh, it was a horrible thing. This little girl got pregnant and they made her get in front of the church and confess her sins. And I'm like, I don't agree with this. First of all, we're not Catholics where we can go to someone and confess. It was just horrible. It really shamed her in front of the church and, and marked her. And it was, oh, it was so hard to watch. So I have a real empathy for young women and young men that get themselves into these situations because regardless, that child was planned before time. God has a, something great for that child. So you don't want to start them off cursing them with your words or your actions. Well, you got to remember the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Yes. The devil will always take you into your past. God is taking you to mercy. God's mercy is brand new every morning. God's always looking for a way out. So I, we've had friends have this happen to them. What'd you do? Tell the truth. Well, my daughter got pregnant. We're excited about the baby. What'd you do? About what? I started getting pregnant. She's pregnant. We're going to have a baby. We're excited about the baby that's coming. We're getting the nursery all fixed up. We're really excited about it. Don't make any apologies. Don't make any excuses. Well, we just didn't do right. Well, we should have done better. We should have said this. You're, you're lying. You're trying to cover your own weakness up. Don't lie. Just tell the truth. What up? Man, I thought I got pregnant. We're excited about the baby, though. We really are. We're working on the nursery. You're thinking about the future, you know, because the kid's going to be born. The kid's going to grow up. Like Angel said, right now it's critical. What you say is going to be quoted back to you 20 years from now. And they're going to ask you, what happened when you got pregnant? My mom and dad loved me. Were they happy? Well, they weren't sad, you know. They weren't sad. And so, well, well, things have gone on. Like I said, many good stories. People that got married, married the person got them pregnant, made somebody that didn't get them pregnant, but they, their life went on. The sun comes up every morning. God's mercy is new every morning. So don't focus on the past. Don't drag up the past. We try to, well, we're, gonna, we're the blessed are the problem solvers. Matthew 5, 19, blessed are the peacemakers, the problem solvers. We got, well, we're going to fix this. We're going to make the best of it. And just don't deny it when you're out in public, running to somebody at Walmart. Hey, I heard you kick out pregnant. Yes, they did. We're excited about the baby. It's doing another seven months. It's going to be re- going to be really good. We're getting the nursery fixed up right now, and and it'll shock most people. You don't feel bad because the devil makes everybody feel guilty. Everybody feel bad. That's his motivation. He's trying to put guilt on every human on the planet. You feel guilty? No. We love our kid. Loved as much now as we did before. We've always loved our kid. We just well, we're looking on the future. Going to have a going to have a grandbaby. It's going to be great. It's just that simple. Yeah. It is that simple. It is. And, you know, the Bible says the kindness of God leads them into repentance. Oh, man. So just be very kind and loving and supportive. Yes. Because that's what she needs right now. Yes. Sorry, I kind of went a little heavy on that, but that is a very, that's a, that's a a very important to me. I've seen, I've just seen that taken very. It it is a critical moment in their life. They're going to, I'll say it again. They're going to quote you 20 years from now, what you said at that. Because they already feel bad about it. Oh, my gosh, they got pregnant. Well, other people have sinned, but they didn't get pregnant. Does that make you any less a sinner or more of a sinner? No, you just got caught. That's the only thing that's happened. And so the adults around you need to be supportive. Well, we're excited about the baby to come. You don't sit there and re- rehash them. Well, we should have. We could. You can't do that. It won't fix a thing. That's what the devil does. He drags up the path. Leave the past alone. Well, kid okay, got pregnant. We better get a nursery fixed up. I'm going to get you the doctor and get you good physical, get your blood work done, you know, get ready for this thing to happen. Start buying some pampers, you know. So focus on the future, and it will change that kid's life. I don't care who, whether it's your kid or your, somebody your kid got pregnant, you got to focus on the future, not the past, the future. That's where your hope's at. So anyhow. And you never know. She will probably turn into the best little mom oh, you've man. ever seen. All right. Uh, Joe, my wife loves to watch romantic comedies, but I'm a fan of action movies. <laughs> we can never agree on what to watch. There's a bigger question here. I feel like I always yield to my wife's wants, but it doesn't seem like she's as willing to do that for me. How do I communicate this without initiating a fight? You don't. Just watch what she wants to watch when she wants to watch it. I tell me all the time, you died in that marriage ceremony. 
You can't have a covenant, which a marriage is a covenant unless somebody dies. So when you got married, you promised that day in front of God, from this day forward, I'm living for them. What are you going to watch? What they want to watch? Ain't some of the same way. I want to watch old war movies, old black and white movies. And shoot them up. We watched one the other day, and it was so old and black and white. <laughs> the picture wasn't even clear around yeah. it. It was, it, I was just, I tried. I tried. I did try. And Angel still does it. She'll say, Joe, you'll like this movie. Joe, and I never do. But she said, Joe, you're going to like this movie. You're going <laughs> to like this movie. You're going to like this. Uh, I showed you one last night you liked. I liked a lot. You finally hit a home run, but that was a good one. We're going to watch <laughs> that one again. But as a man, you're supposed to defer to your wife. You, you, you are the, you're on the bottom end of the totem pole, guys. You, you made that lady to serve her the rest of your life. Good days and bad, right or wrong. What are you going to do? I'm going to serve that lady. That's my job. And what I do, like when we're in a hotel and there's only one TV, <laughs> is I take my little headphones and my little iPad and I watch what I want to watch while Joe watches. She's a wonderful woman. That woman is a loving woman. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's, that's an ebb and flow, a yes. give and a take. Yes. Or get another TV. Yeah, I was going to say, you can get a real cheap, get you cheap TV and put it in another room. And, uh, I mean, Angel, I will do that sometimes. I got my own office at the house. So we can we do, do that a lot, a lot, a lot. I think we'll go to my, I'm going to go to my office and watch a movie on my screen. We do not, yeah, we do not have the same taste in TV yeah. at all. <laughs> Opposites attract. Doesn't bother us a bit, does it? Mm-mm. Well, if I if I'm stuck with one TV and no internet, yes, it might bother me a little bit. <laughs> All right, my son is 13 and is constantly gaming. He doesn't have a lot of friends in the real world, but says all his friends are online. I know we live in a different age now, but I don't get it. I'm just worried that in the future he won't be able to connect with people in the real world. Well, I have yes, you do. a son who is a gamer. And, and a very good gamer. Yes, and when COVID was going on, I said to him, aren't you bored playing games all the time? And he said, I've waited my whole life for this moment <laughs> <laughs> where, where yeah. I don't have to work and I can just play games all day. <laughs> and so I don't get it. His wife is a gamer, too. And, Thank uh, goodness. Thank goodness. Yeah, I don't get it. I tried one time. Because he loved them so much, and it made me nauseous. And they have friends that are gamers. They get together on a regular basis. They do. They do. Now. And, like and there was a time that he was very isolating and stuff, and it did concern me. But then, finally, they got bored, and then they decided to find some friends, and now they're so social, yeah. <laughs> I hardly ever get to see them. But uh, it's probably a stage, but, I mean, it can get too, too, too deep for sure. I mean, I've seen kids that cross a line there because some of them are violent and some of them are very sexual so you do have to be very careful um i don't think there's anything wrong with limiting time that they can do it well limiting time and limiting what it is you can watch you know i just say it's my house so in my house we don't watch that stuff i mean i did that before the things were ever invented we had our own closet of movies or dvd movies and and the video movies and so but I knew every movie's in there. The good guy always wins. There's no movie where the bad guy wins or the good guy gets killed at the end of the movie. And so, well, that's not real. Well, in my life, it's real because I read Revelation. The good guy wins. We win at the end. It's a great book. They're not redoing it. Volume two's not coming out. You read volume one. Read the last book of the Bible, Revelation. We win in the end. And so, it ends good. So watch what ends good. Just be careful about that. Well, and I also think that... uh could probably negotiate with him like I would like you to get involved in the youth group and then I will let you play games for this many hours or whatever <laughs> during the week. So I mean there, there there's things to do, but you can put boundaries on it. That's that's part of the job. Putting and, boundaries. And what Angel said is really critical because you're not trying to restrict them, you're trying to expand their world. I don't mind you playing, I'm glad you're good at this, but I need you to also kind of expand your world and meet some real people every now and then. Engage real people every now and then. Yeah. So I'm not trying to restrict you. I'm trying to expand you. I'm not some hovering mom trying to cut your joy off. I'm trying to expand your joyful life. The old helicopter mom. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. My, my kids told me one time I was a helicopter mom. I said, you're welcome. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We pray you have a very good week. Love on your family. Hug your spouse. 
and make new friends. Yes, do that. Smile at somebody. Shake somebody's hand. Take somebody to lunch. Even if it's for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're going to have a great day, guys. It's going to be good. You know, I have never in my life had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Telling you the truth. That's not right. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.